Hey everybody, Thomas here, and uh, I've got baby Katie out here looking in her pockets, trying to figure out what's in her pockets. Where are these pockets at? So, one of the things I was going to talk about today is I'm actually cutting some older pine, and I'm having an issue that has popped up on many forums, on many uh, Facebook groups, YouTube posts, everything else like that. So, one of the things I pride myself on is trying to cut the cleanest straightest lumber that I can and right now as you can see it's hard to tell that right there is not straight and in fact when I started cutting into it, it had some blade go up go down go up a little bit kind of okay then went up and then started diving down I didn't notice it till I was down here in fact I stopped because I didn't want to go any further and risk ruining any more of this log now this is a customer's log and everything it didn't dive much I'm probably about an eighth of an inch ish over here and what I did is because I saw this blade movement I'm trying to make sure we get the uh, the best boards we can out to the customer I stopped it I took the blade off when it was actually in the log right here back the mill head back and changed blades first and foremost the number one thing to check is is your blade dull now Certain logs, especially pine, if there's if they're older logs and they've got the lighter knot sections throughout them, they're going to be hard, and it's going it, to it's really hard to keep your blade stable in that log if the knots are just a much denser material than the surrounding wood. Now this is an older log; it's kind of dry and has some decay on it, but obviously towards the center or there's a knot or something that's causing that blade to do that. First things first, though, like I said, check and see if it's dull. My blade is in fact dull. Next thing you need to check is make sure your blade is level. So my blade level is off just slightly. I'm not overly too concerned about that. I'll make that adjustment later, but you want that bubble to be right in there. Also, this is influenced by the levelness of your sawmill as well. Now I don't have my long level right here with me. I'll have to check the level of the sawmill as well. You also want to look, is there any buildup or is there anything that's causing my guide rollers to push this blade down artificially? or is my alignment some kind of alignment back here off so <clears throat> i looked at my guide wheel other than this bearing starting to throw out grease on me uh, my guide wheels are pretty clean on top and then i looked at my belts my belts are pretty clean on top that's actually really important to check as well especially if you're cutting pine you're gonna get a lot of buildup of pitch on these and then actually can expand your blade it'll raise off of this guide roller because this guide roller right here actually you know it's making contact. That's actually pushing down about an eighth of an inch, roughly. You also want to check the tracking of your blade. My blade seems to be pretty well tracking. So, actually, to tell you the truth, this right here is a little bit pushed back, whereas that side is a little bit pushed forward. So, I will make some adjustments on, uh, on my blade tracking. That won't be very hard to adjust, and uh, I'll make those adjustments on the back side. But again, for cutting what I'm cutting right now, that's not really going to affect it too much. The biggest thing was the blade and the sharpness of the blade. So I just threw on a brand new blade right now. This is a Timber King Ultramax and everything. So I expect this blade to cut very crisp and very smooth through this log. Another thing to look at is your speed of cut. So if you're, if you're cutting through a log extremely fast, then you will have... Uh, potentially a dip or a dive. Now I will show you an example of that. This is the log that I was cutting last weekend, one of my own logs, cutting up for a job. And I didn't really pay attention. I was just trying to cut through it as fast as I could. <laughs> and I hit a knot section. And actually the blade didn't dip until after the knot section. So this is one of the boards right here. That's a pretty good dip. So that was an inch and I think it was an inch and a half board. Maybe it's an inch and five eighths. I can't remember. Anyways, that's a pretty good dip. And of course, the board that was on top of this was bubbled out the other way. Now, the customer, he was okay with uh, the bubble on the one side because he was using these uh, in, a, in a barn structure, but I could not sell him this board because of how much this dipped. And what I, in fact, did is I, I cut it down to a, a shorter section. But this one right here, the blade was nice and sharp. But what it was is I hit that knot section 
as you can see and in fact there was a knot another knot section i believe on this side because i was cutting this direction right here uh that sucker dove like you would not believe i mean it really really dove and it happened so fast i actually didn't notice it at all i didn't hear any engine tune difference i was just you know list jamming out to my music and then once i go up to get with the the uh, tractor off the pile i'm like son of a gun that blade dove so again sharpness of your blade you need to make sure that's good levelness of your blade and you make sure that's good speed of cut you need to slow down your cut if your blade is getting dull or if it's an old um, log or something like that and you may have some hard spots in there you want to be a consistent speed throughout the log and just like that example right there and the other thing is you want to make sure you don't have any buildup and stuff on your blade or on your guide rollers or belts so again having a sawmill if you're going to provide wood to the public you want to make sure you provide the best that you can and again i won't i won't charge people or i won't sell stuff that's not cut correctly um it's just it, it'll, it'll put out a bad reputation and everything and i just try to get the best quality wood that i can out there now on this log right now i'll go and throw on the video again or a time lapse and everything i'm gonna go ahead and cut this through and then i'll, I'll turn it upside because what i'm cutting is, is one by six out of this and then we'll look at the cut and see how it is I'm going to resaw the exact same height where I started right there. So I might have some weird paper thin stuff in there, but once I go ahead and finish out the rest of this cut, it should turn out pretty nice. So stay tuned. So obviously it's no longer foggy. It is now the afternoon. You won't believe this, but I actually had to take this log off and I've had, uh, I've had three people come over looking either to buy wood or have me cut wood and stuff like that. So this log is now back on here dealing with the, uh, the dipping blade. Now the blade that I had on this morning, I, I changed it out. Now I have a new one on, but I've already cut. And this actually is a really good representation of uh, what pine pitch will do. So the last log that I just cut had a lot of sap in it. And it was an older pine log, but uh, you can see that's really on there. And I was not running anything except for water. Now really good would be like a detergent and you can see it's it's here in the bearing got some buildup on top of there so all these things like this and also as you can see on my wheel and i've got some buildup on there too now when i was initially cutting this log i didn't really get any buildup until the very end there there is a big pine knot area at the very end but uh this is a really good i mean literally real world type of a uh, scenario where i have all sorts of crud on here uh, to show you if you start getting a lot of buildup on here now i'll start running my water heavier but if you get a lot of buildup on here that can cause your blade to push down artificially more so than what this should because this right here and then the guide over here there is supposed to be a little bit of downward force on this not a whole lot and i'm not running my blades really tight if you look at my blades and what i've talked about on the channel is i run about 1100 psi so not anything crazy i know some people that run as high as like 1800 some people run 1400 but 1100 works for me i don't overstretch the blades and it seems like they last a long time because again y'all i get five to six sharpenings on my blades now whenever i am cutting some really really wide stuff oak or something like that i might bump it up to like maybe 12 1300 psi but for the most part 1100 yeah let it roll so Blade still feels pretty good and sharp and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the time lapse. We'll cut this up and verify that the, in fact, the cuts are nice and straight. And then we'll finish uh, this job up. I've got this log to cut, that log, and then I'll do another video. Those are some chestnut logs over there. So yes, I think I talked about this in another video, but those right there, there's three logs over there are in fact American chestnut. Stay tuned, here we go. The final cutting of this turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with everything. What I did is the top board is a little bit thicker than the rest. This one's about an inch and a quarter, whereas the rest of these are all an inch. And then the bottom board, I left it two inches. That'll give the customer something to work with. The reason also, another reason why I did that is the bottom section right here on the bottom part of this log was a big pine pitch sappy area. And you can kind of see uh, some of the 
I guess a piff on that. It was kind of a weird crooked log, but I had to cut pretty deep on that side and on this side to get rid of that section right there. And that right there is one of the things I want to talk about as well. Uh, cutting through knots, and especially in pine and pine net where everything's kind of set up. So you can see this knot right here, it cut nice and clean and everything, no problem. But inside this log, there were a few hard sections. Here's a hard section right here, which actually caused a little bit of blade rise into the beginning right here. And one of the things you can do, there's there's a theory about, so this section right here was a huge knot, so it, it was causing the blade to ride just a smidge higher and then kind of settled out. But one of the things, the orientation of how you put the log onto the mill, some people, when you have a really knotty section, if you do the top of the tree towards your saw head, uh, your attack of the blade into the knots won't cause a section where the blade will rise up. So what I mean by that is if you had the tree where the butt section was down here, now this, we're talking about the top of the tree, not a normal cutting tree, but if you had the butt section down here and towards the top you had a lot of limbs, and you got to think the limbs are going off it this way, so it's going to cause your blade to want to follow that limb. However, if you had it in the reverse section and say your limbs are this way, you're going to kind of cut into there. It's a little more aggressive of a cut. However, it, you won't have all that uh, wood you know that path of least resistance to follow per se as you would so that that is another trick you can do on the on a section of wood that's really really knotty now there are some logs that you just you just you can't beat there are some logs i i cut a pine log the other day and i stopped cutting when it was about this size it was like say 12 by 13 or something like that because my blade was getting so much pitch set up on it i was running pine saw i was running soap it just didn't want to come off so i'm like you know what i'm done i don't want to mess with this log no more it just ain't worth it for me and then a few weeks later i'm like i had a job where i had to do some two by sixes and i figured you know i can cut some two by two by sixes out of that cant that i put off to the side i cut two boards i said you know what i'm done and then i gave that log to my dad so there are some logs you just it's just not worth it <laughs> Uh, it, that's why I also I don't like to touch pine that has a lot of knots on it Like the, the top section of the tree when you start getting to the branches. It's just not worth it I know a lot of y'all are getting into sawmills and everything you're trying to learn Learn from our mistakes when I was you know every single log I was trying to save every little bit, you know trying to do little skim cuts Now sometimes I'm like it's just not worth it blade life is it means a lot when you're doing a big order job and trying to scavenge one extra little board of it sometimes isn't worth it. Sometimes you just need to do, you know, do those deep cuts, go into the wood, and get the meat that you need. And then if the if the off cuts you're cutting are, are big enough, you can actually resaw them. And that's what I did last week uh, when my dad was here and everything. There was a couple off cuts that we cut off. We threw them back on the mill. And I was able to get like one more or two more little boards out of it. But. Uh, I know when, when people first get into milling, they're going to try to save everything. Don't, don't try to save everything. It's just not worth it. Um, the other thing is, again, so we went over this. The sharpness of your blade really is one of the biggest driving factors. The speed of how fast you're cutting into the wood is another factor. The alignment of your mill, so that would be the blade, the wheels, and all that stuff. And is, is there pitch or is there anything on your, your guide wheels? Or on your your belts or your uh, drive wheels that have something causing things to be out of alignment those are the main things you can look at and also like I said sometimes it's just too knotty sometimes you just don't want to mess with the, the wood that has all the nasty knots anyways if you're cutting wood that has a lot of knots in it it's not gonna be good for structure it'll be good for like paneling or something like that but a lot of the knot sections if you try to make a two by four of any length uh, where you're going to span something like a joist or a two by six odds are that's going to be one of your weakest boards in the in the stack there And it's probably going to break so you don't want that and it's not really graded lumber So you want you want the good clean cuts without all the knots save the knots for a, a wall or something like that hope this has been uh, Informational folks you, you don't want to be that guy with a sawmill who's known for oh that guy His boards always come out wavy this that and the other you want to be the guy that has the really good looking lumber, you know, and the customers keep on coming back. Uh, to tell you the truth, folks, I have not advertised at all anymore because right now I am so bowed up with our location. We have people stop by on 613. In fact, 
Well, shooting this video, like I said, I had two groups of people come over and had some other people contact me on Facebook wanting to talk sawmill stuff. So stay pretty busy. Um, keep your reputation clean, uh, be respectful of people, and produce a good product. That'll go a long way. Stay tuned, y'all. Hope to see you around. Uh, looking to hopefully do some kind of show here coming up soon and uh, meet some people in person again. We'll see you around. Thanks.